If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably because you're a business owner that has started something. And what I want to tell you guys is that is the role of a visionary. And it is your job to harness the skill of being a visionary because the very pulse of your company, your family, your partnerships, your ecosystem is going to be your pulse. Whatever your situation is currently is not your forever situation. That's really what real business owners is, man. Like, we don't care where you come from. Where are you going? Our goal and our job is to reduce the mistakes that you have to make or the money that you have to lose. You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, don't give up. You learn, adjust, and continue to move forward. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Real Business Owners Podcast. And um, as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you don't know, because we have been starting our show with this um, lately and we've been uh, pushing it just slightly, right now we are promoting our first Real Business Owners live event. Okay. And uh, we want you there. Um, And I said this in in one of the last podcasts, but like, I know it's hard for people right now because it's just like, it feels like uncertain times, economy and everything. And, and uh, even in the last introduction, I said, listen, you never want to subdue to the fear and retract. Okay. You still want to get in the rooms. You still want to get around other abundant thinkers that are doing things because that's where most of the growth happens. And especially in uncertain times, you have the biggest opportunity. And so I say that because a lot of these events out there have had a hard time selling tickets. And it's like, we're not even trying to throw that big of an event because we want to hang out with you. We want to solve problems. We want to create with the people that listen to this podcast. And so like, don't, don't let the fear of like the cost of a ticket hold you back from coming. I'd give it to you for free, but then we know you wouldn't take any action. And plus, like, dude, I have some really amazing friends that I've paid to come and speak to you guys, people I've done tens of millions of dollars with. I'm paying for their travel. I'm paying their speaking fees because I don't ask for people to do shit for free. That's that's not cool. Um, And and I value them. But like literally, I've made tens of millions of dollars with some of these people that are coming to speak and hang out with us. And I want to hang out with you. So quit hesitating and getting on the fence like just go buy your ticket okay we're it's right now it's early bird pricing at like the 297 dollars price we are going to raise that as it gets closer um but uh like take advantage of it right now so um anyway i want to see you there that's the pitch i uh i really 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 know there's gonna be a ton of value there so just come hang out with us okay uh, but today you guys i i'm doing another solo podcast because I want you guys to imagine your business really thriving. I want you to imagine your entire life like, dude, true, true freedom. I want you to imagine that for a second. I want you to manage or imagine your, your kids just like really looking up to you. Your spouse like really having true admiration for you. I want you to imagine your employees really just their best versions of themselves. I want you to see them like stepping up for you in all these different ways. I want you to see these high level executives that you've recruited to come in and replace you so that you can have your freedom and they love what they do and the opportunity that you've given them. And I want you to imagine this amazing culture. Like you love the company that you're at and everybody else there loves you and they're there to just build this amazing thing your mission, because it's your thing. If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably because you're a business owner that has started something. And what I want to tell you guys is that is the role of a visionary. And it is your job to harness the skill of being a visionary because the very pulse of your company, your family, your partnerships, your ecosystem is going to be your pulse. Okay. And I have been the visionary of, of a lot of things within our companies. Okay. And, um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be very, very honest with you. Like 
I am not like an expert in a lot of things. Like I'll go get on some stages and I'll talk and you know, but I'm not like this great speaker. I did years of phone sales. Okay. For my companies and other companies. And like, I'm not like this silver tongue devil that has all the smoothest moves. Okay. But I'm going to tell you the one single thing that I can tell you without a doubt that has brought me the amount of success that I've had so far is that I have a skill of being a visionary. Okay. A lot of people think that this is like the visionary is not really like a skill or a talent. It definitely is. And and that's kind of what this podcast is about. It's about what like practicing your vision. Okay. Because it changes and it updates and you've got to be willing to update your vision. But I talked about this on a coaching call and I want to I want to talk about it on a podcast for everybody because the stuff that was coming out of my mouth was like so important and I can't stress it enough and I want to give you guys the same thing that I was giving on this coaching call but I want you guys to imagine the company and your life and your business and your relationships just being so great because that's the stuff that you need to spend some time on and you need to create a blueprint around, okay? And I have this book, okay? And I didn't realize I did this until um, after I read this book, but maybe you guys can attest to this. Okay. You, you do things, but you're unaware of things that you do. And then you read a book that puts things in perspective and you're like, oh my gosh, I actually do that. And that is one of the reasons that I have so much success. This book is called Psycho Cybernetics written by Maxwell Maltz. And this isn't like about being a visionary. This is actually a book about improving your self image. Okay. This guy was a plastic surgeon and he would uh, do surgery on people. Like let's say someone came in with a horrific nose and they just wanted a beautiful nose and he would give them a beautiful nose. And when they'd come back in for their follow-up consultations, you know, three, six, 12 months later, you know, they were still unhappy with themselves, even though they had this perfect nose, they still saw an ugly nose. Right. So he got so obsessed with like how the brain works. And, and he ended up just like, you know, without totally changing careers, he just started going deep and deep and deep into the how, how the mind works and how these people can be like so stuck on this self image and, and like how they see themselves is totally different than how other people see them. And like, what are the patterns and things that people do? And really it comes down to like the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. Like we all spend a lot of time, if we're the creators of companies, we all spend a lot of time like visualizing, you know? And uh, we visualize like success and, and we, we have like these, these visions of it. And it usually is like, we're looking for like some complacency or comfort or financial freedom, you know, and, and like we picture that kind of stuff. But visionary is actually a skill that I want to encourage people to take seriously and actually like practice. And what I mean by practice is by creating an actual blueprint for your vision because it gets so powerful. You know, to be honest, when I started into my entrepreneurship, I was sold my business partner's vision, Jeremy, because he had created an entire course on how to day trade in the foreign currency market. And he sold me the vision on that because he sold me a vision that was like, dude, we could get rich together. Well, me being an opportunist, I've always wanted to be rich. So I'm like, how could we get rich, Jeremy? And he's like, well, I've got this course and this course can teach people how to make more money and they're going to pay us for it. And I'm like, okay, so you could teach these people this stuff if I could sell it, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me go out and find some leads for this. Well, there wasn't leads for it at the time. Forex was brand new. This is clear back in 2006, right? So like there wasn't like this whole Forex thing, you know, and, and we never got to the point where we're in your DMs, like scamming, you know, like doing the whole Instagram thing. You guys get those Forex messages, I think, right? I do anyway, where they're kind of like scammy. They're selling like a get rich quick scheme or a done for you thing. This was like a full on educational course and it wasn't easy, you know, and, I, and Jeremy taught me how to day trade, you know, and I actually made money at it. I actually made enough money day trading to buy a boob job, um, you know, for, uh, uh, a first wife of mine. <laughs> so I actually did have a success story, uh, but you know, whatever, I guess that's her success story, not mine. But, uh, but anyway, um, 
but so I did make money day trading. So I believed in the product, right? And he sold me this whole vision, right? Um, and then as we got going in, into business, like I really loved the tax and accounting thing. I loved it a lot because that's where I came from selling. And uh, I wanted to get back into him. So I sold him a vision of selling tax and accounting. And the vision was simple. It's like, dude, we could get rich, okay? And anyway, so when I read this book... <laughs> When I read this book, because that, I mean, that's really, I mean, when we are startups, that's really kind of like the ultimate vision, right? Like we go sell people on coming to join our sales teams and our companies based on like, we're going to change your life. We're going to, we're going to make you rich. You know, I'm going to get rich and you're going to get rich, right? Like that's, that's kind of like what happens, right? Um, but that's only one part of it. After I read this book and I read this book, you guys, uh, 2017, maybe it was 18. Anyway, I read this book a little while ago and I realized as he, he has this analogy in the book and, and he says, okay, when we create a meaningful goal or vision in our brains, our subconscious is designed to get us to that goal. And he uses an analogy of a torpedo. See, when, when we created torpedoes, okay, they lock on a target just like your subconscious does, okay? And we lock on a target and we send the torpedo at that target. And if something gets in the way of that target, the torpedo is designed to go around it. Now, it's going to take a little bit more time to go around this obstacle, but eventually it's going to get to its target and it's going to hit it, okay? Unless it's intercepted, right? But, but that's just besides the point. The whole analogy is like we have our brains designed just like we designed torpedoes. Once it locks on a target, our brain is trying to get us to that target. The only thing getting in the way of that target is our conscious mind, okay? And it's us. We put all these obstacles in the way that the torpedo or our mind subconscious now has to maneuver around, okay? And so, and, and I'll give you a great, I'll give you a great analogy, okay? I had a dream, a very, very meaningful dream to build my family their dream home. And I sold one property and I took my savings and I went and I bought the perfect lot to build our dream home on. And I went to this lot every single day, and I visualized our family home there and the sunsets that we're going to watch together and a pool and backfilling the lot to where it's a level lot because I didn't want to walk out basement lot. And I had this vision, right? Um, but it was like an iffy vision. And that's what it's like in your guys' business right now. Like you have kind of an iffy vision. Like, yeah, you know you want to get rich and you know that you want people to make great money in your organization. But like, you know, um, that's really only one part of, of meaningfulness to you and your entire team, right? There needs to be more to it, right? And and it's the blueprint. And so like, it's this iffy vision. And so I, I looked at this lot for three years before I actually created a blueprint for my home. And I created a blueprint, literally I spent $7,000 on creating a blueprint, a home, a home design. And I went and I, and I looked at it at this lot, I'm like, it doesn't feel right. So I threw it away. And me and my wife scoured the internet. We looked at all these different home designs and we found one that had the look that we liked. And then we took it to the draftsman again and we paid him again. And we said, we want the home to look like this look. We like this style, and but we want this bigger and we want that wider and we want the basement and we want it to have a theater room. And, and we started creating our vision with a blueprint based off of an inspiration of a home style that we liked. And, and we worked with them and we got this home home. It was actually a her, but we got this home. Perfect. It was our dream home. And we, and we, and we said, okay, let's go. And we got the building permits and we hired the builder and, and, uh, and I worked on this home as well. And within one year we had our dream home and we had our dream backyard and we had all the rooms with the kids and, and we, everything that we had created, that we created as a blueprint, we brought to fruition in one year. Okay. Now I'll give you a flip side of the analogy. Okay. 
It took three years before we actually created a blueprint. Once we created a blueprint, it only took one year to actually attain it because our subconscious mind is literally like a torpedo trying to hit the target. The only thing that was getting in the way was us, our self-doubt, our you know, our insecurities, our our self-sabotaging and taking these different paths and you know, not really getting to it. And, and I'll give you a flip side of this whole analogy. When I was just a sales guy working in a call center, these dudes walked in, two of them, okay? One's name was, Russ Whitney, this two separate times, and another guy's name was Kim Crowther. Everyone like treated these guys differently when they walked in the room. I didn't know who they were. I was kind of a new sales guy. Okay. But after they left left, and everybody made a big deal about these guys. I mean, they were like treating them like they were gods. They were like, oh well, dude, those guys are those guys are speakers. Like really good speakers. Like, like they are the guys that go out and create all the leads for us to call. And I was like, wow. And then they said, yeah, those guys make millions of dollars. I'm like, whoa, I want to make millions of dollars. I would love to be treated like that. Like I'm a big deal, right? And I made this really important mark in my brain that I want to be a speaker. I want to be a guy on stage. I want to be treated like that, okay? It didn't happen. But I go on this whole journey, right? Buy into my partner's vision, create a Forex company. And then I sell him on my vision of creating a tax and accounting company. And and uh, and then all of a sudden these opportunities start showing up to get more leads. And they say, hey, if you sponsor our event, we'll let you be a speaker on our stage. And I was like scared, but I was like, oh my gosh, I remember when I wanted to be a speaker. I said, okay, let's do it. I sponsored the event. I created like a 10 or 15 minute presentation and I did my first speaking engagement and, and I bombed, right? And I've had a lot of speaking engagements since then. And, uh, and I've gotten better and I've also had a lot of failures with it. And I actually have created like a pretty good amount of like influence and authority in, in our niche and in our space. And like, you know, like I don't feel like a biggest deal, but like sometimes people tell me I'm a big deal and I'm like, holy shit, you know, that's kind of cool. But my brain, just like a torpedo, has been trying to turn me into a speaker for like 15 years before I actually finally put a blueprint to it, right? It's been trying, I've just been putting all these different obstacles and, 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 and objectives in the way and hurdles in the way, and, uh, and it took 15 years to get to where I could actually say I'm a speaker, because I am, I go and I speak on stages, and I've been paid to speak on stages, and I've sponsored events and I spoke on page at stages, and, and, uh, and when I look back, it's like, My subconscious mind has been trying to steer me to get there the entire time, but it took like 15 years before, like I said, I want to be a speaker like that guy to actually being on a stage speaking versus my dream home took one year to build once I actually put a blueprint to it, you know? And so the whole point of this podcast, you guys, is the visionary of a company is it's an actual talent and it's a skill that you can improve. And I want to give you a little bit of, um, I want to give you a little guidance because after I read this book years ago, I started paying attention more to, to the torpedo effect. And I started paying attention to the fact that I am a visionary and I have sold my vision a lot. Okay. Like our mission statement, um, like our, 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 our desire to change an industry, um, our our desire to make a difference in, in people's lives, you know, like those are the things that like are the reason that our CEO decided to come and, and talk to us. I remember when I was telling him my vision, I said, Hey man, like our vision is to be different than other accounting firms. We realize there's this gap in communication and, and we feel we have failed a lot at trying to, to perfect it. And I want you in here because I think with your skill sets and our skill sets, we can do it. And, and it's so cool because not only are we going to make a ton of money to, you know, solve this problem because the accounting system really is broken out there. Like it's so reactive. Every accounting firm's reactive. And I'm like, and we have tried to be proactive and we end up being reactive and it's not okay. And that's why we want you here. You could be such a big part of changing an entire industry, which makes a difference in people's homes and also makes a difference at everybody's lives under this roof. Right. And he was like, man, I'm getting goosebumps 
Devin literally said, I'm getting goosebumps talking to this about you. I was like, yeah, man, like I literally, I grew up in a home where the IRS took away my dad's uh, uh, money out of his bank account. They levied it. And, and they, and they garnished my mom's paychecks when she went and got a job to try and put more food on the table. And, you know, I heard about this IRS fight my entire life. They actually put liens on his home and they forced him into, into bankruptcy. And they, they thought about like selling the home and, but it was all they had left. I'm like, man, it was like, I know, I know what type of financial strain it is on a family to have a lack of financial knowledge in their home and a lack of like financial accountability. And it's like, it just is like this burning desire in me to create a company with you and, and Trevor and Jeremy and JD and, and to that, that literally and Kason and, and all these people here to make a difference in people's lives. Like, man, I want business owners to be like, I don't got to miss my son's ball game to worry about my accounting because it's done. But I also want them to have like the financial IQ and the financial self-reliance to actually know what's going on. And so I really think that our company could change the game. And he was like, man, that's so impactful. And he wants to be on board, right? And you guys, it's not hard. It's, I mean, it's not easy. It is hard. It's hard to create something that big. But I tell you that because... I have sold a lot of people on my vision from sales guys to many employees here to CEOs to come in here and help us that, that have really impressive resumes to my partners to stay on the mission and not give up and sell myself on not giving up. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something right then and there that, that I just said. Some of you aren't hitting your marks on your vision because you haven't really sold yourself hard enough on it yourself. Okay. And so you need to like, you need to buy in. You, you can't expect people to get buy in on your vision if you're not bought in on it. Okay. Now, does that mean you have to start small? I don't know. Um, I feel like my vision was a lot smaller before than it is now. It's actually pretty big now. So you got to be willing to update it. And that is where the vision becomes so powerful. Okay. Is you've got to be willing to update it as you hit these benchmarks in your business and, and you have an epiphany that your, your mission statement's bigger than you thought it was. Add it to the blueprint. And so anyway, what I've done is I've created a blueprint and I allow it to be updated, but my blueprint hits on a few things. Okay. It has to be effective to be able to make sales. Like I said, I'm not like the best salesman. Like I don't have the smoothest silver. I've been pretty successful at just doing sales. Okay. I've sold solar. I've sold opportunities on the phone. Um, but probably the greatest thing I've ever sold is my vision because I'm passionate about it. So you got to become passionate about your vision, but you also have to have a vision that hits one of three things. Your vision, because this is where people are going to buy in. Okay. How does it impact them directly? That's going to be enough for some people. It's not going to be enough for all people. So when they hear like the opportunity, wow, I can make better, better and bigger commissions than I could anywhere else. I can make a residual income. I can build a book of, in, of, of business here that sets up my family. It's going to change their home, like their dynamic, their world, like solely. Like, yes, you will sell a lot of people on that. Like, look at our compensation plan and look at our training and look at how much we're going to teach you and look at how much money you can make here. Look at what our top producers do and look what you could do. That vision is powerful. I've got these other people in my organization too, um, like Corey McNeil. And Corey McNeil, many of you know him, <coughs> Corey McNeil cares way less about making money for his world and he cares way more about how does this help other people. Okay. So that's the second part. You got to have a vision that hits on like, Hey, this is gonna make a difference in your life. And you got to have your vision that hits on, this is going to change other people's lives. This is going to help people. Right. And so when Corey McNeil's like, man, this is so cool. We get to help people that gets him more excited to buy in and, and be a part of a very awesome culture because he is fueled by helping other people. Well, yeah, he's got to make great money. You know that Corey McNeil has never asked me for a raise. We've had to force him to take raises, you know, and he has a very, um, uh, he has a very awesome skill set that that's probably worth more than we were willing to give him back then. But like he bought into like helping other people, 
And I think that is so amazing. Like that helps our culture, right? The third part is, is a part of your vision pitch has to be, how does it change the world or an industry? Like what ripple effect does it make out there in the world? I was willing to update my vision on that. Like we, and Trevor, and Trevor said this many times as well, we're trying to change the standard of accounting because it's broken. Only the wealthy get the best treatment because they can pay for it. Only the wealthy can go out and, and afford Ernst & Young and you know companies like that to actually take over the financials of their company. And there's all these different financial scams along the way that hold people back. And there's just this lack of knowledge and ignorance. Right? He's like, how can we be more proactive and actually change the standard of accounting? Okay, I love that. This is where it gets powerful. People start creating their own visions off of your vision and you're willing to update your vision. Vision, right? And if your vision hits on one or all three of these things, how it affects their lives, how it affects other people's lives, and how it's going to make a difference in the world, because that's what fuels people. They want to be a part of something bigger than them. Guys like Corey McNeil and guys like Devin who came in that are our CEO here now and my partners, you know, like, like that is what creates buy-in. And without buy-in, you can't have a great culture. And without all of that, you can't really have a great mission. And people will be bought in on the mission if the vision is structured properly. So I have this podcast with you because I want to encourage you guys. I want to encourage you because if you're the founder of your company, okay, or maybe you're a partner and, you're, and your partner is the founder of a company. It's his vision. Maybe you need to have him listen to this podcast and you guys need to get together and create a unified vision. So we have a unified vision here at Easier Accounting, and then we all have our own visions as well. We all have different meaningful things. And then our employees have visions as well. And so when we hear about this, like, like hey, it's th their goals, and, and this is a vehicle for them to hit their goals, it's like, heck yeah, man, that's power. They are creating their own visions and attaching it to your vision, which creates buy-in, which creates them wanting to stay on the mission and, it, and whether it's it's some vision of their own on how it impacts them directly or how it helps other people or makes a difference in entire industry, which makes a difference in the entire world, like these people in your organization are creating their buy-in based off one of those three things. So you might want to craft your vision, your presentation on your vision for your company that it's going to hit on all three of those things because now you're going to attract the best, most qualified people to come in and be a part of that mission. The fact that they have a vision for themselves that is in direct like influence of your vision is powerful. You want that. You want to embrace that. And so my encouragement and my lesson for you guys in this podcast is stop trying to force a vision that you haven't even created a blueprint around. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's got to be something. Create a vision of what your company's going to do on those three things, how it's going to affect your people's lives in your life, how it's going to help other people and how it's going to make a difference in the world. And like really sit down with your company and map it out. Sit down, you as the visionary and map out. Like I believe in my products and service so much and I believe in paying my people more and giving this compensation model so that they can truly have like security within our company. And I believe and create these checklists and create these blueprints around like every department of your company and, and how it really helps your customer and how it really makes a difference out there in the world so that people really can create their own vision and attach it to your vision and create the buy-in to get on the mission. That's how you create long-lasting companies. I can't believe our company has even survived some of the hard times that we've went through. But we're still here. And I, and I have people that have gone through hell with us. And they're still here. And it's because this vision that I have and my partners have and that we've created is big. And they see how... It, if we pull it off, not only can it affect their lives, but many others as well. And so I started looking at the vision as a much more important role. And I heard a statistic the other day. I heard a statistic the other day that only 3% of people, I don't know if this is just our country, 
this is worldwide, but based on some poll, right? 3% of people have goals. Only 2% write them down. Why do you think our success rates are so low? Is there going to be obstacles? Is the torpedo going to have to maneuver around things? And is it going to take a little bit longer than you think to hit your goals? Probably so. But it's going to take a lot longer if you don't create a blueprint for it and you don't give a more direct path for the torpedo to hit the damn target. So the visionary skill is something that we can practice, not just by updating it, but by reviewing it, by staying true to it, then updating it talking about it, constantly pitching it, be a broken record, keep selling the vision to your partners, to your employees. Speak it into the world. Share it on social media. What is your company doing to make a change? Speak that shit into existence. But I promise you, if you create a blueprint around it and you create some checklists around that blueprint, not only are you going to have a more defined company, but you're going to have something that you can review often. If you go and you look at your vision, your, your blueprint once a month, and then you make little updates to it here and there, and then you go and talk about it in your company meetings. Hey, guys, I had an epiphany. If we could create a software that does this automation to be proactive and follow up for our customers because they haven't got us the documents, like that's something that no one else is doing. I want to update that to our vision because I think that could make us get to where we're making an impact in the industry a lot sooner. And you share it with them, right? You have these epiphanies, you share it with them. So stop looking at your vision as just these goals. Start looking at it as an actual role of your company, the visionary, and practice it and actually harness it as a skill that you can actually get better at, right? Like there's that book, Rocket Fuel. It's like the visionary and the integrator. Cool, it's true. But the visionary role is where it all starts, Everybody's in a company because of some vision. How weak or strong is it? Are your people in your company just sticking around because there's no better option? Are they looking for a way out because it's just all about you? The vision right now is just about you getting rich or does it actually make a difference in people's lives and their lives? And does it make a difference in the world? So Richard Branson got asked, um, the owner of Virgin Mobile, I saw this not too long ago either. This kid got the opportunity to ask him a question and he said, Richard, not only are you a billionaire, which is a well-respected thing that like very, very few people have done, but you're a billionaire that's created magnificent companies over and over and over again. You've created multiple of them. How have you done it over and over and over again when it's such a giant feat for just one man to do? And he said, it's simple, man. I got really good at selling a big vision And I used that vision to recruit the best people in the world to come and help me build it. So I attracted the best people in the world based on my really big vision, my detailed vision. I'm adding words to it now, right? But that's what Richard answered the question to him. So I'm like, ah, man, this visionary stuff is pretty powerful, right? We should sell it, guys. We should sell that vision. We shouldn't let the imposter syndrome and the self-doubt stop us. Talk about it. Put it out there as much as you can. Is it going to happen overnight? No. But it's going to happen a lot quicker if you treat it like an actual duty to your business. So define your vision, right? Your personal life, your business life, put it down, create checklists around it. What are the next steps? That, it's going to unravel itself because your subconscious mind, like the torpedo, is trying to put, it's trying to get you there. It's trying to actually put things in your, in your way to help you get there quicker, right? And sometimes we don't see it. So if we actually focus on the vision and the blueprint, we create the blueprint, we're willing to update it, we're willing to spend time on it every single month, like all of a sudden these solutions will show up to help get you there a lot sooner. So, with all that being said, that is what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So, um, please, please, if you are the creator of your company, do not sleep on this. You can do so much, so much quicker by just dedicating 30 minutes a month to, like, designing your blueprint. So, 
Um, I'm actually creating a document around it because I've, I have these things scribbled all over the place. I'm organizing and creating a document around it for the RBO live event to where I can give it away to where people can actually have like a, a structure to creating their own blueprint for their vision. So like I said in the beginning of, of the podcast, come to the event, you know, I'm going to give this away. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. I'm turning this into a talk. You know, so you're going to hear it again if you come to the event, but I'm going to give you um, an actual workbook to create your vision. Um, but you don't need to wait for that either, guys. Like, don't wait around for things. Like, go create your own workbook on your own vision. But the, the point is, is create it. Put it in writing. Don't just let it sit there and rattle around as this undefined thing in your head that's really unclear all the time. Put it out on paper, make it powerful, and sell the shit out of it. And watch a lot of amazing people show up to help you create their vision with your vision <laughs> you know what i'm saying so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed that um again go to rbolive.com get a ticket come to our event if you liked this podcast share it with somebody especially if they're a visionary of a company or they're trying to create something or maybe they want to create something like this is the most crucial first step the sooner people do this the sooner they'll get what they want and i'm a firm believer of that um so now full disclosure our company still has problems. We're not there yet. But like, man, we have made some amazing strides. We have done some amazing things. And I don't want to take that for granted. And I appreciate that. And the more clear and defined we get and unified we get on the vision, the more great things happen. And so um, go do it for yourselves. And again, I appreciate you all for tuning in. Much love. Peace out. Peace out.